everybody, my name is Tanya and these are my top 5 books of 2015. So I've been umming and ahhing and looking at what I read during 2015 trying to decide how many books I'm going to choose for my you know, favourites of the year um, and I surprisingly enough managed to settle on a list of 5 that I'm fairly comfortable with. I had a fantastic reading year, there are definitely books that I absolutely adored outside of this 5 um, during the year that you know it, the list probably could be definitely higher but I kind of settled on these five and it felt right. I've also got one bonus one at the end as you know an honourable mention so it's kind of the top six. I've got a mix of things that I rated five stars and a mix of things that I rated four stars which I found really interesting too. Looking on my you know star ratings for the year there are some definite things that I feel like I could move around that don't reflect what I'm feeling now and it's interesting because I never know whether to stay with the reaction that I obviously had at the time and the rating that I gave it at the time or how I feel now after reflection and in some cases quite a number of months reflection so I don't know whether I'm then giving a true representation of what I actually feel about the book so many months later so if you've got any opinions about these ones let me know in the comments uh, kind of what you do I have gone through and changed books in the past and in quite a mass lot at one point where I realised that the way I'm rating now you know and those books really didn't reflect and I think there's a lot of things that are still like that on my Goodreads, things that I've rated uh, on one kind of scale that definitely don't now fit what I'm rating and then there are some books or authors that uh, you know have to be rated on their own scale and they're not within the scheme of things it's just uh, their own special set. But in either case we're here to talk about my favourite books of the year so let's run through them. I've not put these in any order because that's just impossible so I've just picked them out in the order that I read them during the year and let's get started. So the first one I've got is something I read back in February I believe and that is Fast State of Carolina by Dorothy Ellison. This was the book that was recommended to me by Mercedes from Most of Bookish Choosings for my Booktube Recommends project and I absolutely loved it and I'm still not sure that loved is the right word because it is so horrible and heartbreaking. The contents of this book are just absolutely devastating but at the same time I absolutely adored it. It was just amazing, amazing, amazing and people should definitely read it. It's maybe not for everybody, it's quite violent. There are some horrible things that happen um, to Bone who is our young protagonist and at the hands of her you know, evil stepfather but the way that it's told and, and just you... I fell in love with this book so much as disturbing as that is and it definitely had to make my top books of the year. So thank you again to Mercedes for recommending this one to me. It's something that wasn't on my radar beforehand but I'm so glad now to read this and I will definitely be rereading it in the future. I did do a full review video on this one as part of my booktube recommends project which I will link down below. It's from a long time ago, I don't know what I said in it anymore but there's that. The next one I've got is an incredibly popular one but I couldn't help but put it in because I did absolutely adore this book and that is The Martian by Andy Weir and specifically the audiobook narrated by Assi Bray. It was just phenomenal, I loved every second of it, I just wanted to be constantly listening. This of course, as I'm sure you're aware, is the story of Mark Watney, an astronaut who is accidentally left behind on Mars when the crew on his mission believe he is dead and so he's left abandoned on Mars with you know no help able to reach him for a very long time and how he's going to manage to survive without the food to make that kind of distance. Uh, you've heard it all before and I've spoken about this before, the humour, you know it's a book that sounds absolutely devastating, is so funny, you know incredibly amusing, I love the character of Mark Watney, everything that anybody else has ever said about this, yep that's it. I just I loved it, the movie was also excellent and I just, this is another one I'll definitely be revisiting in the future and is definitely a favourite. So it may be quite a common choice, but it's a common choice for a reason. I loved this book. Next up is something that I received in a book right quarterly box. It is something that was on my radar already, so I was super excited to receive it. And that is Mr. Fox by Helen Oyeyemi. This is something that I still feel that I have no idea what happened during it. My whole experience of reading it was kind of, do I know what's going on? What is real? What is not? I have heard a lot of mixed things about this that not everybody you know enjoyed it as much as I did but for me something just clicked with it and its style even though I was kind of doubting anything that was happening and whether I actually understand this book at all I don't know but on whatever level I read it on it worked and I loved it. This one is very loosely inspired by the fairy tale Bluebeard and it follows uh, a character Mr Fox who is a writer who can't help but kill off his female heroines and it's kind of uh, him and his wife Daphne 
and his fictional or not fictional muse uh, Mary Fox and it's just it's bizarre it's wonderful um, we've got kind of interactions between Mr. Fox and his wife, Mr. Fox and his muse, his muse that as I said may or may not be fictional, is she coming to life, then we're getting uh, some of the tales that he's writing in between and it's it's just beautiful and wonderful and I think I definitely need to revisit this one and see whether I have the same or a different experience but something in the experience of reading this one I, it was just taken for a total trip and I loved it. And so I definitely want to read more by Helen Oyemi. I own Voice No Bird, so hopefully it won't take me too long now to get and uh, read that one because kind of going through my list and picking out my favourites for the year, it's like I absolutely have to put this on. Can I announce it? any reason why? Not really, not necessarily. I can't put my finger on it, but I adored this book and it's definitely on my favourites for the year. The next book I've got is another book from my Booktube Recommends project. And this time it's The Incarnations by Susan Barker. This one was recommended to me by Holly from Library of the Digital World. It's something that I hadn't heard of before she spoke about it. And I am so glad that you recommended this to me, Holly, because I ended up really, really loving it. So this one I read in the middle of the year somewhere, around July or August. And it's just so good. So again, there is an interview review video that I put up about this one that I'll link down below. Again, I can't remember anything that I said it about it and whether it was a good review. And so this is another one that's got a quite a number of different layers to it. And so in its most basic form, this is the story of Driver Wang, who is a taxi driver in modern Beijing and kind of his daily life and his life with his uh, wife and child and his family. Um, and then he starts getting letters from somebody who claims to be his twin soul and who has lived many past lives with him. And then we start getting the stories of these past lives, which is set in different um, eras in Chinese history, which was incredibly fascinating. And so we're going back to, uh, you know, different times in history. Um, there was a story that was set during the Cultural Revolution in the 70s, and there's a story, you know, set in ancient times, and it was just completely fascinating on all levels. The the story just of Zhao Wang himself was fascinating. The uh, letters that he's receiving from this person, as I said, claiming to be this twin soul, um, were fascinating. The, the accounts of those lives together were fascinating. It is just <laughs> fascinating, this book. Uh, it's also quite brutal and violent, um, particularly in the past lives. There are definite uh, horrible things that happen <laughs> in each of those, basically. Um, so it's not necessarily for everybody but I found it just completely compelling. I loved the way that it was constructed and, and you know, the, the story that it was telling. And again, definitely it makes my top books of the year. So thank you again, Holly, for recommending this one to me because I never would have read it otherwise. And I'm so pleased that I did. And it's definitely another thing that I think I should revisit in the future because I think I'd get so much more out of it on another reading. And the fifth book for my favorite books of the year is a fairly recent read and that is Evelina by Frances Burney. I read this one as a buddy read I think in November and it was just a pure joy. So Evelina was first published in the late 1700s and is the story of our main character Evelina who has been raised uh, in the country without any kind of uh, knowledge of society and societal norms and um, you know those social etiquettes that are expected of a young lady of this era and what happens when she goes to London and is introduced into society and kind of the uh, mishaps and misadventures she gets into uh, not having a knowledge of that and the attention that she then receives um, being introduced into society it is absolutely hilarious. So basically in this book uh, Frances Burney is poking fun at 18th century life and those you know manners and, and societal restrictions that are placed on uh, people particularly young women during that time I think it is a, an amazing piece of literature to be published during that time especially uh, published by a woman I think uh, you know Bravo. Also at the same time it's incredibly accessible as I said it's love out loud funny in places and I think if you are nervous of classics particularly those that are written you know this predates uh, Austen and things like this this is from the 1700s um, but it's I think a fantastic place to start very very readable very accessible and very very funny. And so as I said I think that's fairly comfortably my top 
five favourite books of the year, but I do have one uh, honourable mention, something that I've only finished in the last couple of days and I'm still kind of processing, but I think it was absolutely brilliant. So it's my little bonus book for this uh, favourites list. And I've just been trying to put some coherent thoughts together in my December wrap up. I don't know how well I succeeded, but I tried. And that of course is Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. I found this to be just the way that this is put together more than anything. The storylines in it is fantastic too, but the way that this is put together in that it is kind of this series of interlocking stories and we get, you know, the first half of a story and then we switch perspective and get the first half of that story and it goes on and on until we reach the full story of like the, the centre person and then we start getting back um, the second half to everybody in that kind of reverse order until you've got the full story of everybody in this book. And just for the way it's constructed alone, I found that to be entirely fascinating and I really, really enjoyed reading a story with that structure. So as a little bonus on the end of this, I think there's a lot more that I need to think about and take in about this book. I think that there's a lot more that I could gain from a reread of it, but purely for the experience of reading something uh, different, this is definitely a little bonus on the end of this video and something that I think I need to think about a fair bit more. These were my top five favourite books for 2015. Uh, let me know what you thought of these, if you've read any of them, did you love them too, did you not like them, uh, what were some of your top books for the year, and if you've got any questions do let me know. As always thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!